Hey guys, what's up? This is Jason. Uh, so today we're going to talk about how to make a Kydex sheath. And I brought my son, Mason. He's going <laughs> he's gonna to help me make the video because he wants to learn about making videos. So uh, today's video we're going to talk about making a Kydex sheath or how I make a Kydex sheath. And I'm going to take you through the steps of that. This is my um, one of my latest knives, the uh, Tonto Chopper. This was just uh, auctioned off. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have saw that. So I'm going to make a Kydex sheath for this so that I can get it mailed out. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. All right, guys. So when you're getting ready to do the layout for your Kydex sheath, you want to have your knife and your Kydex uh, with you, obviously. And then you need to look at the outside dimensions of your knife. So, whoa, <laughs> watch out for the pedal, buddy. So what's good to look at is uh, if you have one of these layout boards, it's really helpful, but you can just use a ruler as well if you want to. And so you need to look at the overall dimensions of your knife. And when you're making the Kydex sheath, you want to give yourself probably a good inch all the way around your knife and wherever you're going to have the sheath go to, to give yourself a little leeway. So, for this knife, I, since I've made a few of these Kydex sheaths already, I know that I do a piece that's about six inches wide. So that'll give me just over an inch on either side, and then I make it eight inches long. So starting from here, uh, up the sheath a little, because I usually cut it back, and then I go eight inches, which is going to be about out to here you want to go a little bit past the tip. So basically you figure out the layout of your knife and how you're going to make it and then you cut out your kydex pieces. Now there's you can get very complicated with these sheaths if you want to if you learn and you get better. You can do multi layers, you can do multi colors, there's all kinds of different stuff that you can do uh, to make your kydex sheaths I guess more um, distinguished and like nicer looking and other little things that you can do to it. This is going to be just a basic Kydex sheath. So I have my dimensions for the knife. I'm going to need 6 inch by 8 inch pieces. And you're going to need two pieces, one for the top, one for the bottom. So let's get to cutting the Kydex. Alright, so these Kydex sheaths that, that I buy are uh, 12 inches wide by 24 inches long. Uh, you can get them in all different sizes. Uh, from the, There's a lot of different uh, maker or uh, different websites and whatnot that you can get Kydex from, uh, many different places that sell it. So since this one is 12 inches wide, I know that for two 6 inch pieces, I'm going to need this entire piece. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mark out my 8 inches down and then make a cut. I use just a regular utility knife for this. You could use a bandsaw. Like a utility knife is probably the easiest way. And of course, you know, whenever you use one, you want to be careful. They're very sharp. You can easily slip. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out 8 inches. So using my board here, I'm starting at 10, so I want to go to 18. That will be my 18, my uh, 8 inches. Line up the top and bottom, and then make your cut. And after you make, I don't know, 4, 5, 6 passes, you should be able to just snap the kydex on your cut line, just like that. And now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to basically cut it in half. That way I'll get my two 6 inch by 8 inch pieces. So the halfway point on here is going to be the 16 inch mark because I'm starting at 10. Make my passes. Alright, so now I have my two pieces. So if you want to look at that on the knife, you can kind of get an idea of how much wrap around I have on here. When you're first starting out, you may want to give yourself a little bit extra, and as you advance in your sheath making, you can you know, cut it down to a smaller amount or whatever you feel comfortable with. So basically that's my top and bottom piece. 
So for the next part of this, we're going to go to my house because I put the Kydex in the oven and then that's how we form it. So we will see you once we get back there. All right, so I'm back at my house and we have the stuff set up for the next step of making the sheath. Um, we have the knife. We have our Kydex pieces. And this is probably the most important part. This is something that you're going to need if you're going to be making your own sheets. This is a Kydex press. Uh, I made this one myself. Basically, uh, these can may be made in several different ways. You don't have to have one that flips open like this. You can buy sheaths that are uh, Kydex presses that are already made. Sometimes they're a little pricey. You know, it just depends. This is uh, thermal foam. It's like a very high density and uh, uh, high heat foam. And you can see it has a lot of little bend marks in it from other times when I did Kydex. Uh, sometimes if you get the Kydex a little too hot, it'll leave indentions in the foam. But uh, after you use it for a little while, you pull these off, you can buy new pieces of foam. The foam pieces themselves I don't think are super expensive. If I remember right, I want to say these were around $20, 20 to $30 for this for both pieces. Um, this press I made myself. All I did is I took two pieces of wood, cut them to size, I took some right angle, uh, I put bolts in the back here, and then the bottom piece here is welded. So you can see how this is put together. And it's basically just a hinge on the top, and then that's how the, the press works. So what you do is you heat up your Kydex, you grab your clamp, which you don't need a clamp this huge, <laughs> and you clamp it on with your knife and the Kydex inside. You let it sit for uh, about 20 minutes or so. You want to let the Kydex cool down almost completely before you pull it out. All right, the next thing, uh, we're going to get the Kydex in the oven set up, and we're going to go from there. All right, one more very important step that I don't want to skip and we need to do before we heat the Kydex up is when you're making a Kydex sheath, you want to put a layer of tape onto your blade because if you do not put uh, tape on there and put just a very slight spacing between the knife and the Kydex, then the Kydex will sometimes mold uh, too tight or have too much grip on your knife and you won't be able to put it in and out of the sheath easily. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to put layers of tape on both sides of the knife and then if your knife is going to be carried or you're going to make it with a uh, belt loop on it, which we won't do in this video, it'll be more of a simple one. You want to take something like this, which is a Q-tip, and what I use this for is I cut the ends off the Q-tip basically just give me a small relief and what's going to happen is this piece of q-tip is going to get taped to the blade right at the tip like this and what that's going to do is it's going to create a a drain or a spot for any moisture that might happen to be in the sheath to drain out so that'll get taped in and then when we press it in there will be a small relief there which you'll see as we progress in the video so right now I'm going to get this taped I got it all taped up. Um, of course, you want to be careful when you're using the X-Acto, but you're working on knives, so I'm assuming you're going to be careful anyway because things are sharp. This knife actually does not have an edge on it yet either. I always wait until the very end to put edges on my knife, uh, including till after I make a sheath for it. So you want to make sure that it's trimmed up fairly clean. You want to make sure that there's not any super high points uh, any lumps or anything like that because it'll actually show, show through on the Kydex. Um, and you may have noticed that I did some pretty high lines in here where I put the tape in. So 
This will show up later in the sheath, but basically what I did is I followed this angle on the top of the blade and I did some kind of raised lines in the tape just by the tape overlapping. This will actually show through on the Kydex, so it'll give the sheath kind of a pattern uh, for the knife, you know, just a little bit more kind of decorative, I guess. And then the last step, like I said, is going to be taping in this little piece here of Q-tip. And basically all I do for that is I just put it on there like that. I slice it on one side and sort of wrap it around just so it's kind of a little more secure on there. And then you just line that up on your tip or pretty close to the tip. Put the tape on, wrap the tape around. Again, you don't want anything sticking out too much. And this little flag here I'll cut off. Or I'll try to cut it off. Well, okay, let me redo that. <laughs> that didn't stay on too well. Another small piece. I'm going to put my slice in it. I'm going to put the slice a little closer to the edge so it'll actually wrap around without having a big old flag on there. You know, pretty much straight down in line with the blade, and that's it. So now this knife is ready to accept the Kydex. All right, so when I put my Kydex in the oven, I usually just throw it onto a cookie sheet. I put a piece of aluminum foil on there, and then that's how I put it in. So on your Kydex, you'll notice that there's kind of a textured side, and then there's a smooth side. So when you heat it up, you want to have the smooth side facing up, and then the smooth side is what's going to encase the knife. So you want the smooth edges or the smooth side of the Kydex against the knife. So one will be at the top piece, one will be on the bottom piece. And that's the way that you want to put it on there. All right, so I have my Kydex press set up here right next to my oven. And I'm also warming up lasagna to eat for lunch. I have my sheets here. I have the oven set to 300 degrees, which I didn't focus in, but it's there. And basically what you want to do is about 300 degrees, you want to put your Kydex in. And then you do not want to leave it in there longer than three minutes or so max. Uh, if you look inside and you notice that the corners or the edges of your Kydex are starting to curl up, then your Kydex is too hot. You're going to need to pull it out. If you let it cool down, you could restart. And also another thing about Kydex, it's a thermal plastic. So if you get to the point where you put it into your sheath and something gets messed up, the knife is off, two of the pieces don't line up, whatever, you can put your Kydex back into the oven, let it heat up again for three more minutes, it'll flatten out and then you can redo it. It doesn't have a memory when it's hot. So you can redo a sheath if you mess it up, as long as you're not, you didn't do any cuts or anything like that. So I'm going to put this in, I'm going to set the timer on my phone, it's going to be for three minutes, and then we will pull it out and go from there. Alright, I got my knife set up and ready, I got my timer going, it's at two minutes forty seconds, so it's about ready to pull out, I got my clamp here ready. I can smell the Kydex, so I know that it's warmed up. Go ahead and pull it out. Like I said, you want to take the shiny side and you want to have it facing up. You want to position it on there. Put your knife where you want it centered. You take the other piece, shiny side down, put it on there, centered. Don't drop your clamp. and then clamp it down. So now I'm going to let the knife sit here for about 20 minutes and then we'll open it up. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes since I put it in here. It 
See how it pops right off? Sometimes it sticks together, sometimes it'll pop right off. But I got a nice good mold on there. You can see the blade all the way around. On the inside you can see a nice indention on the blade. Good fit all the way around. So now it'll be back to the shop to drill holes, put in rivets, and get the rest of the sheath cleaned up. Okay guys, back at the shop. This is all the stuff that we're going to need to finish the sheath out. Uh, I have some clamps, I got the knife, I have the kydex, I have a drill, I have some rivets here. Uh, these rivets, they come in all different sizes as far as the diameter. So these are quarter inch rivets. I use quarter inch rivets pretty much for everything. That's kind of the most common uh, size. You'll see a couple different sizes out there. But then you also have to pay attention to how tall the rivets are. So depending on how thick of kydex you use, because the kydex also comes in different thicknesses, you'll need different size rivets. Or if you use multiple layers of kydex, you'll need different size rivets. So this is a rivet uh, tool. And I got this, I want to say, from the USA Knife Maker or... I think it might have been USA Knife Maker or Knife Kits. So it's basically just a rivet tool. Now the rivet tool you're also going to need to get sized for the size of rivets that you use. And basically the way that it works, you have a top piece here, goes inside, aligns it. You have a bottom piece here that the rivet sits into and then the kydex is in there already. And then you put this on, you hit it with a hammer, uh, you can also put this into a small uh, arbor press or they even sell arbor presses that already have this in it and then you wouldn't need this piece because you would have basically these two pieces this would be into the arm of the arbor press you put it on there press it you're done it doesn't take a lot of force to do these so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your knife put it into your kydex and this is still like totally rough and basically what we go where we go from there is we want to clamp the kydex onto the blade this will be when you're getting ready to drill but prior to that point what you want to do is you want to mark out where you're going to put your rivets so I usually use a ruler because um, you want to try and keep it consistent you could just you know, totally mark it out however you want. Let me grab a Sharpie. So this is a fairly large knife. Um, I usually try to pace, space the rivets out every two inches, basically. So, and then as I move up on either side of the knife, I try to keep them even. And also, when you're planning this out, you need to figure out how the sheath is going to retain the knife. So the retention point in this sheath is going to be right here, which is basically the very back of the knife. So the kydex is going to hold the knife on this particular knife right here. The rest of this is not going to be any retention in the knife. And every knife that you do is going to be different, so you've got to kind of plan that out so that you get a good snap in your knife. The other thing too is you got to watch where you put your rivets because you don't want to have a rivet you know way up here on this particular knife if i put a rivet up here i would have a really hard time pulling the knife out and putting the knife into the sheath because it would just be too tight so this is that will be some trial and error as you do this but you'll get used to how it works as you go along all right so now i'm going to mark out my spots where I'm going to drill. And you only need to mark this on one side because you're going to drill through both pieces at the same time. Okay, so you can see my marks. Basically there's going to be two at the bottom, three on each side. This corner here I don't want to be super tight so that's why I'm not putting a rivet there. So now we'll go ahead and clamp it up and we'll get ready to drill the holes. All right, so we have our knife clamped up, and we're going to start drilling. I'll let my son do uh, one of them here. Come here, grab it, Mason. Okay, so you want to take that very tip point, and you want to line it up. Let's start with this one right here. Go ahead and grab the drill. 
both hands and you want to stabilize it with one hand and then you use no, the drill not the knife, I'll hold the knife hold it up, it has to be perfectly straight up and down go ahead and start it slow push down, keep it straight there you go, push down a little more hold on okay, try it now a little faster there we go, stop, 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 stop pull it back out push the trigger a little bit and then pull it up there we go so we got our first hole that's cool you want to try another one or you want me to finish them? I just want to try one more. Okay, let's do this back one here. Okay, and we're done. So we have all of our holes drilled through both of our pieces. And what I like to do next is I like to take this little deburring tool, which is, you know, you can use for metal. And then I like to clean up any little extra stuff that's on the holes. And I basically just run that on both sides. Alright, here we go. We're set up on the anvil. We got our little riveting tool here. I got the rivets in my hand. <coughs> and what I try to do is I put all the rivets in place before because you don't want this to shift. It shouldn't shift too much, but there might be a little bit of play in it. So you want to load in your rivets all from one side. Okay, so all the rivets are loaded, <coughs> loaded in from one side. <clears throat> this side of the rivet that already has the eyelet, the flange on it, is going to go into this piece. So it's going to sit in there basically just like that. You see this other edge that's sticking up, that's the edge that's going to get hit down. So while this is in here, we basically put this in here. You want to put downward pressure on this because you want the kydex to be tight together. That piece is in there. And that's all you need, just that much of a tap. If you had this onto an arbor press, it would be you know the same amount of force going down. <clears throat> so I'll get the next one in here, get the piece lined up, you want to do it? Don't smash my finger. <laughs> you want to hit right there. A little bit harder. There you go, that's good. Alright, so let's see that one's good. And then we'll go to the next one. Oh, that one's a little too far. Okay, we'll do this one. Alright, go ahead and hit it. Uh, maybe a little harder. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Let me do one more hit on that leg. Alright. Whoa, you got it. Okay, next one. You want to do one more? Do a decent hit. And you want to keep it... See how the the plane of the hammer, you want it to be flat. So you don't want to hit it like this, okay? You want to hit it straight down, like that. Okay. All right, let's try another one on this side. And then what you want to do is just work your way around. You can generally start basically from one and just go one by one all the way around. It doesn't really matter the order that you do them in. All right, go ahead and do it. A little bit harder. There you go. Hear how it sounded different when you hit it? You gotta listen for the noise. Alright, go ahead. One more. Okay, you hear the solid sound when you hit it? That way you know that it's all the way down. Go ahead. One more. There you go. All right, that's all of them. I have this one here. It was a little too far, so I'm going to just do that one out of the jig. All right, let me see the hammer, buddy. Okay, so now we have all of our rivets in. They've all been stamped down. 
we're ready to move on to the next step. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the point where we are right now for our sheath. All the rivets are in, everything's tight, and then what we do now is we want to trim this up. So you could do this on a bandsaw, a port -a band um, You could use your grinder, your 2x72 if you wanted to. It's quicker just to kind of get the rough shape of this on the port -a band and then go back and uh, what I like to do is to dress it up a little bit more um, using my, my sander and then um, you have to figure out what you're going to do here on the handle part. This particular one, the handle is kind of just there so I will most likely bring this cut about right there and then this cut will be about the same down on this side just above the corner of where the knife seats right here and then it'll kind of round around and then I like to put little waves in between my rivets just to give it a little bit more character so next it's to the bandsaw port band all right this is going to be loud kind of loud All right, that's my rough cut right there. The rest I'll do clean up on the 2x72. All right, guys, this is where we're at. Uh, I cut away the rough shape on the uh, port -a band bandsaw, and then I went back with my 2x72, and I ground in some, uh, kind of rounded and smoothed everything out a little bit. The next step on this is to take a, an X-Acto blade, and I go around and I scrape the edge of the kydex at about a 45 degree angle, roughly, to get all of the little shavings off and all that. And this is the first step to get that smoothed out. After that, I'll use some 220 sandpaper and I'll actually hand sand all of these edges. And at that point, it'll be pretty much done. Okay, some spots that you want to pay special attention to is the drain hole that we put in. This was where the Q-tip was. You want to make sure to dig all this out. And then also where the knife goes into the sheath, what I like to do is I like to take a Sharpie or something like that and I push it into here like that so that it's pushed apart and that way you can use the X-Acto blade to clean it up. So you see how there's a lot of uh, little shavings and stuff around here. You need to clean all that stuff up. All right, now that pretty much finishes up our sheath. The last thing that I like to do on mine is I like to take just a little bit of WD-40 and kind of just put that on the sheath itself. Gives it a nice shine. And then of course I usually put some kind of WD-40 or coconut oil or something on the blade when I put it in here. It's nice to keep a good uh, at least a thin layer of oil on the knife at all times for any high carbon blade. And then that's it. So that is our finished sheath. Knife goes in. The retention on this is not <laughs> going to be awesome because it's not a belt holster sheath. It's more just to protect the knife. So I like to usually get it a little bit tighter than that, but this one is a little loose, but it's not bad. The sheath definitely won't come off. So that's it. Alright guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video of how to make a Kydex sheath. I hope that uh, this answered some questions for people out there and helped some people. Uh, if it did, if you could give me a like or subscribe, I would really appreciate that. I'm trying to build my channel up. And uh, that's going to be it for this one, how to make a Kydex sheath. And I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. Bye.